talk, man. Who we got in the building today? You know, you got a little Brandon. This motherfucker coming straight from the south side. You know what I'm saying? For sure, man. For the people first time tapping, it wasn't where you from, dude. Uh, I was originally born in Denver, Colorado. A lot of people don't know that. But I was raised in the south side of the money for sure. Wait, what that? Are you going to Denver? <laughs> yeah, nobody believed me when I tell them. How you think? How that, how that go? Like, I ain't never met a nigga that was from Denver. I mean, I really don't know too much about it because, like, I moved out here when I was, like, six. Right. But did, like, kindergarten, first grade out there, and then came out here second grade and up. Is your, uh, so it's like, you got family out there? I think just my sister is just out there just now. But both my sisters and my little brother was staying out there for me. Yeah, so, so did you ever like go back and visit? Yeah, I go back. I got like my sister. She got some kids, so I'm going to see like my nieces and stuff like that. But I ain't been since like what 2019. But now, nah, well, you really from the eight up? Cause you've been out here since you like, and you said when you came out here, y'all lived in the south side. Yeah. Like, sure. Okay. What was it like growing up over there? I don't care. It was fun. It was lit. Like I feel like the best side to be from. Fuck with all sides, but like the south side got the swag, got the sauce, like to really laid back for real. And then like we was always up on game and certain folk wasn't up on. Mm-hmm. But you no know, coming is good and it's bad too. Like it needs to be hating and shit like that. But smooth for the most part. No, but yeah, no, nah, it's crazy. I always said that like south side seems just like the most laid back, chill, you know, some play shit. Like I don't know. But what part of what part of South Side? Well, I just stayed all over but like basically South Fort. So I just stayed in like you can see here, I stayed in Fairburn, I just stayed in Riverdale, I stayed like basically like right out of there, all types of places. Okay, that's so, And then so like what was what was your home like? Like did you work with both your parents? It was like it was mixed. So like I ain't a person that just like never knew what a conjoined home looked like, so like my parents, they were married when I came into the world, and like, they was off and on, like, but they officially, officially, like, divorced and all that when I was, I want to say, like, 10th grade, 15. Okay. And so, who, who, did, you got siblings, but you said you got a sister. Uh, uh, you got any other siblings? Yeah, I got two sisters and one brother. Man, where you fall on? I'm, like, the third child. No, <laughs> but I'm the only one with both my parents. Uh, like, both like living together or same parents? Like same parents. Oh, type of shit. I got a different uh got a different dad and my sister. Yeah. Got a brother from another mother for real. It's all type of shit. Okay, so when when that happened though, how did you feel like that affected you anyway? Like No, nah, not really. Like I ain't the type of person that like be caring about all that. Like me and my siblings, like some people they'll call that like a half sibling, like nah, like that's my brother and my sisters, like I go to war for them. No matter if we grew up together every single day or separate, like, you know, just seeing each other when we see each other, like, how I did, like, you know, I love them all the same. Well, I'm saying, like, your father, uh, like, them separating. What? Like, did that, did that, did that have any effect on you? Oh, no, nah, so you was just still. I ain't no cap. When they separated, like, for me, like, I feel like that was the best thing that could have happened. Yeah. For real, because, like, like my parents, like they just got it, like they got into it bad. Like it was like real bad to the point, like not even saying like no message them, but like it was just too toxic seeing them both together. Like I feel like I'm more happy with them separated, they more happy separated. Like it was just like a better decision. Type shit. Yeah. So okay. So what type of kid was you growing up? Like was you outside a lot? Was you inside? What was you into? I was outside for sure. Like I couldn't stay inside, but. I wasn't just no bad kid, like, it ain't never been, I've always been, like, the same person since I was young, like, trying to get some money, or, like, when I was young, of course, was in the sports, like, play like basketball, football, just acting for real. Yeah. And, um, so how long you, did you play uh, sports in high school and shit? Yeah, I played basketball. And how, how was that? Was you nice or what was you? I was smooth. I wasn't, you know, like, Michael Jordan and so I was smooth, got a shot for sure. Yeah. Just five, six, so like, you gotta really be like Muggsy Bowles or just crazy if yeah. you gonna make it to the next levels. Was that something like that was in your plans? Yeah, 
But I'll say looking back, I could have definitely like worked on certain things better, but even stronger like bad coaching. Like we ended up uh, losing our head coach because of a little scandal. I got a new coach, he messed up the whole program. Like niggas lost scholarships type of shit. Like that didn't have them, niggas that should have got them. Never got them or like they had teams interested and he just messed up the whole program for my my class for Okay, what school you went to? Uh, Pretty sad. Uh, so like, yeah, no. So like, what 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 was your what was your like plans and goals at that time? Type shit. Like, what was your mind doing in high school? Uh, early high school, of course, get some money. As far as like after high school, like I was trying to um uh, my plans was to go to school to be a mechanical engineer. I was say like ninth, tenth grade. I was focused on that like. I always just wanted to work on cars, and then... What got you into that? I don't know, I just always been interested in cars. Like, I grew up collecting little hot wheel cars, and them little collectible cars you can get in different places, like little remote, remote, remote control cars, and I don't know. It's always, like, caught my attention. Yeah. And uh, I was going to go to school, and then by the time I got to, like, 11, 12 grade, it just wasn't for me. Like, Oh, I never done them though. I was straight A student. You just not fucking with it. Nah, cause like a lot of people don't know this, but I finished school early for so like when I turned sixteen, I was eleventh grade, and it was like I can graduate early, calling me like one credit. I was like, nah, I would rather do full time do enrollment next year, so I'm technically going to school for free. You know what I'm saying? Little first year, and that first year when I went, I went to a little community college and like. It was like high school 2.0, and like I just lost the passion. Like I mentioned, checked out. Type of shit. No, I definitely feel that. Yeah, so that's, that's when I officially was like, I ain't going to school. Type of shit. And then so after that, like what you was, what you was doing, you still staying with your mom and shit. Yeah. So I had a uh, really I was staying with my dad, and then I got kicked out. Probably like three months after I graduated, went to stay with my mom. Wait, why you get kicked out your dad's house? I don't care, like. It was a crazy story, like, we just got into it, like, I mean, and my dad, like, we got a way better relationship now, man, like, you know, bad talk my dad, but, like, we just wasn't seeing eye to eye, yeah. came in, he was tripping about something, I feel like, you know, wasn't that necessary, the situation escalated, and then it got to a point where it's like, you get out of the house, you know what I'm saying, I'm like, alright, so you ain't got to tell me twice, you had up my bags, I started walking. Damn. <laughs> yeah, put it. Yeah. And so you went to your mom's house. You walked to your mom's house. Really, I wasn't even trying to go to my mom's house. I was finna go to my partner Jay's house. Yeah. I was like, bro, that's it. Like, I'm out. But she convinced me to come over there, and calm down. You know how mom's is. You know, real mm-hmm. loving. So she convinced me to stay over there. Did my one two. And so I keep hearing you say you were just trying to get some money. What was your motivation behind like getting some money type shit, like? I know kept like I wasn't the brokest, but definitely wasn't the richest growing up. So like had our ups and downs. So like, I ain't the type like oh, I ain't never had nothing. Like had spurts where like money was smooth. Like you know you can't really complain about nothing. Like you always want more, but like you know ooh, ooh. and then we had spurts where it was like are we versus losing the crib type shit. Or, you know this that and the third. So like my motivation came from that as well as like I never forget when I was young. Walked into the store. Like I said, I had an interest in cars. So I asked my dad for a hot wheel car. I was like sell me. He told me no. No. You sell me, you gonna ask why. Mm-hmm. He told me shit, you get your own money, you buy what you want with it. So like no cap. Like since I was like in elementary school, second, third grade, started making my own bread. Like I always had that mindset, like, I don't need nobody for no money, no nothing. Like whatever my parents do, that's what they do. Whatever my siblings do, that's what they do. I'm gonna get my own for sure. Type shit, okay. And so like, I don't want to ask what you was doing to get money, but <laughs> did you know. did you ever like you ever get into any like legal troubles, like any legal troubles or anything like that? A little slight shit. Like I was in high school, had like a little little petty thing that blew over, little you know scam shit. But I don't scam. It was like some shit that tried to put on me, so it didn't stick. 
crazy. But as far as that, like, nah, because my goal, like, my whole life, at least when I was younger, I say, like, I always told myself, like, it's people out here getting rich without doing illegal stuff. You get what I'm saying? Now, the demographic ain't really our demographic, at least at the time, that's what I was thinking. But I was like, it's possible. So, like, my whole mission was, like, trying to figure out how can I get rich the legal way. Because it's easy to do it the illegal way. Ooh, that my dose stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I've always tried that. And I'm still trying to get it. <laughs> no, with that being said, like, where did the music come in? Like, in all of this, like, where did the love for music start? Really, like, my whole life, I've always liked music. I was the type, like, you cut on the radio, I'm singing every song word for word. To this day, like, I know cat. I be knowing songs, don't even know the artist. Like, I sing word for word, you ask who's the artist, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I just got a sound, like, I like the sound. So, um, I was in, what, I was in 10th grade, my partner made a little song called A Little Buzz, so the song was hard and the beat was hard, so I'm like, damn, like, how you do that? He told me, made on his phone, on his uh, app called Songtree. Hopped on it, remixed his, uh, remixed his song. So now we both got a little buzz. So folks like, dang, we gotta drop him on music, so. Wait, so you, your first song you recorded on the phone? Yeah. Man, that's crazy. Wait, how old are you? He said, how old am I now? Yeah. I'm 23. Oh, shit. Yeah, so they were like, I was 15. Man, that's so what you was born in, 2001? No, I was born in 2000. Oh, 2000. Yeah, so, but now nah, basically, um, yeah, we was just making songs on the phone for real. At this point, I wasn't really, it was just something to do, because we was hooping, you know what I'm saying? Every time we get home from practice, making a song, going back outside, hooping, rinse and repeat every day. And then, uh, when I started really having a passion for it, it was like my uncle had died. Like, the way he died kind of fucked me up. So, like, that became like an outlet. That's when like, I grew a real passion for it. Did he do music? No, nah, he actually worked on cars. That's crazy. Uh, but like, like I said, it was like an outlet for real because like, he basically like a slow dip. So like, he um, he basically had a, uh, what you call it? Not a seizure, but uh, is it a seizure? Art it might have been the, yeah stroke there you go he had a stroke you know the hospital they ain't gonna do too much they kept him right. got him to a certain point but then they put him in the old folks home you know you put somebody in the old folks home some reason they always die so I feel like for 30 days straight I watched him from covering when he was in the hospital to as soon as he got there it's like every day like you just seeing like his soul leave out of him you like damn like, you was just doing good and these folks act like they can't do nothing about it. So then, like, mm -hmm. to watch them go, they jump. I don't know what you're fucking with. Yeah. And so, at that time, like, would you, would you freestyle or would you write music? Oh, uh, freestyle. Just sure. freestyle. And so, you just, were you still on the phone with it? Yeah. I ain't go to a real studio until I was like a senior, so I was like 16. So, shit, what studio was that? It wasn't even a real studio, it was like, you know, like my partner house. Oh, type shit, bro. Yeah. Type of shit. First studio I went to was it was called um dang I forgot the name it was in Fayetteville it was in Fayetteville Duck Dog right behind this little um this gun range I forgot the name of it was called like Mr Monster Studios or something so at this time you were out of school and I'm back. Where, where you was in the story. So you you still making music on the phone either after uh after you graduated and shit or that is that when you started going to the studio? No, like I started going to the studio like when I was a senior, like twelfth grade. Mm -hmm. So like after I graduated, I just kept elevating. Cause after I started going there, I went to this other studio called NBC. Like, yeah. you know and then what was your first song that like by yourself that really like people were swept with like? By myself, no feature. Uh, I say my song Ten Toes. And then that was the first one that really had some traction to it. Yeah. And then, so like, it, like, is you taking music serious at this time, or are you just still kind of playing around with it? No, I'm dead serious at this point. Like we performing, doing a lot of different things. Yeah. 
Well, shit, I'm forgetting that really was just a couple years ago or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, thanks though. So, uh, who, who, who would you say is like some of your musical influences? I wouldn't really say I got an influence music wise. I feel like influence is like I study them, I look up to them, want yeah. some like, I want to sound like you. Nah, not even that. Just like, who would you say you was listening to like growing up? For sure, I, I listen to a lot of folks, so I'd say like Lil Wayne for sure. Um, that's like my all time favorite. Uh, this is like some little boy shit, you know, like, of course, songs like No Hand, we had Walk the Fly, the Rascal Dash, with my lane, that was like a staple for me. Um, Future, can't forget Future. Um, anybody from Atlanta, Young Thug, he, especially when I was hooping, when Young Thug was putting out them slime seeds, yeah. that, she had school on a lot. Um, Lucy, Little Baby, a lot of different folks. Type of shit. Okay, and how would you like describe your sound? And how you came up with it? Like when you were in the studio, is that what came out, or like was you intending to? So you say you mean like by describing like with somebody? Like no, not with somebody, just in general, like. I say it's a lot of pain. Um, I got a new sound, like, you know, I've been working on, like, like a little turn sound. Uh, I feel like it's unique, for Not even just saying it because I'm me. I just feel like it's unique, like, it's like a refreshing sound. Like, every, everybody gonna have, like, parts that sound similar to somebody. I feel like I don't sound like the generic rapper, especially not from Atlanta. Right. Well, what would you say like makes you different? Content for one, and then I sell my delivery. Yeah. I don't really promote violence. Cause I ain't. That ain't my goal in life. Like you know what I'm saying? If things gotta get there. They gotta get there, but I don't promote that. No, you know what I'm saying? So, no, I was definitely about to say, though, people definitely sleep on the content of the shit, like, being a big part, you know what I'm saying, like, that's what creates longevity and, you know what I'm saying, shit having some real value to it, you know what I'm saying, like, I be feeling like shit that's, you know, anyone can say it's, anyone gonna say it, so it's gonna be, it's not gonna stick, you know what I'm saying, like, you gotta be creative and really come up with some shit that's like, oh, shit, I ain't heard no shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what's really gonna make shit stick for real. But um, these things now, they just don't sound like each other. Like, it's crazy, I ain't gonna lie. But yeah. how do you feel about like the new Atlanta wave? Like, I feel it. I feel like it's a space for everybody. Like, certain things ain't my way. But at the same time, I don't ever hate on a nigga. Like, the nigga that is having success, like, I applaud everybody just because it's like, yeah. it ain't easy. You get what I'm saying? So like, even like the newer sound, like certain people don't fuck with. But niggas to create a new sound, I feel like it's still hard because it ain't. Like, see, you don't just wake up every day and he's like, oh yeah, you finna listen to this. Yeah. So like, it was, it's different. It's different for sure. But you got some some heavy hitters too. Like, it's really talking about some outside of just me. Yeah, not facts. But your sound definitely is different than the new wave of Atlanta sound. Type shit like the new drill, you know what I'm saying? Like shit or whatever, like that shit. Hey, I'm crazy on that motherfucker. Oh, no, I'm shut up. Yeah. Nah, facts. So, what would you say is like the hardest part about being like an emerging artist? Money. I say money and, uh, money and like, you know, gatekeepers. But I definitely say like, you still love that money. And why you say, when you say gatekeepers, what you mean by that? A lot of people ain't gonna say it, but it's a lot of gatekeepers in this industry. So it's like, this nigga might have these accolades, and he feel like because of that, like you gotta pay to get in with him. Mm-hmm. But the fee you gotta pay is crazy. And then even if you pay, they gonna be at you. Like for an example, let's say you at the club, right? All real, you at the club, they gonna tax you to play your song. Niggas always be like, oh, get your song played, but they're going to tax you. It ain't no little 20, no little 3 5, no little bullshit you could throw somebody that's reasonable. It's like, okay, $1,000 to play your song. 
Then they gonna put your song on when everybody leaving the club. You know what I'm saying? That ain't never happened to me, but it happens to folks all the time. Or like, you know, the uh what it is, the uh the artist showcase. Be a whole bunch of BS. You pay all that money, bring all your folks out. And it's cool because yeah, you performing in front of all these folks, but think about it, if I bring my folks out, you bring your folks out. Technically everybody in the crowd is here for their folks. So you're not really going to give me a fair listen. you really just like, oh, he ain't. Well, I can't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I got my own crew, they'll never say I'm harder than you because they came with you. Right. So you're not really gaining. you just paying and paying and paying. It's a cycle. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So. No, I definitely, I definitely be telling artists about the showcases, but I don't be trying to, you know, fuck with the promoters game and what they got going on. But I be telling artists, though, like, you know, it, just make it make sense because... On top of that, like, and like, first off, if I'm bringing these people, like, why they gotta pay to get in? That'd be another thing that tell you, like, oh yeah, you can get certain amount of people in free, and then at the door, it's a whole different story. It's only you, you might get a free type shit. You know what I'm saying? They have to pay the part and pay the best, and then like you say, and then they'll, <clears throat> and then they'll like play with niggas and then start the performances like at the end of the night type shit, like when the club not even lit no more. So it'd be like the whole shit be like a. Some bullshit for real. Like, and they don't get any shit together. Yeah, I say, like, when I was like 17 to maybe 20, I only think 20, 17, like 19, I did the little showcase wave, but I cut off early, like, that ain't it. Like, yeah. I'm not so dry. No, thanks. But I will say, though, like, there is a way to do it the right way, and yeah. but that's also for a certain type of artist, though. Like, I feel like if you're an artist that's for instance, like you're a street artist whose brand is kind of about being, you know, from the day hood and, you know what I'm saying, like, somebody like that to where, like, all your videos always got hella people in them. Like, if you're doing shit like that and you going to them and you bringing all them people with you, I've seen it work like that, you know what I'm saying, because then you'll start to, like, build a presence of, like, okay, this nigga who coming with Eric, you know what I'm saying, type of shit, but, like, that's really if you don't like that type of artist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're not really that type of artist, then it's, it's purposeless, you know what I'm saying? Especially with everything you can do with the internet nowadays. Exactly. Right. I feel I feel that. Especially like, I don't plan on signing. I ain't saying it's impossible, but I just, that ain't in my plan. So it's like, if you plan on signing, that's something that could possibly get you signed too. You yeah. know, like better recognition. But somebody like me, and why you say you don't want to get signed? I don't know. It just ain't never been for me. Like, obviously, you can get a good deal. I ain't saying you can't. But it's so much that goes into that. Like, you know, let me give you your advance. And you got to really know how to play it from there. When I'd rather just run up my own career, do my own label, right. push myself. Cause all you really need is a connect. Like how you said, there's so much you can do with the internet to where it's like, you get them connects that the labels got. I ain't seen you just out shine them because they gon' forever. Like they've been around for years, so they got they do not do certain things you just don't. But guess what? I can't get shelled at my own label. I seen artists get shelled. They I can't drop music on a label on the BS and they on this and I don't been around too many artists to where it's like you get to see it, they're not really having like that. And some of them you like okay, like, bro, he up as hell. And some of them, it's like, you either get around them or you start hearing the stories like, oh yeah, bro, he was doing this in the streets still. He was doing that. I look at that like, it's one thing if you never left the streets, but certain artists, but like, you done made it to a level. Like, why are you yourself doing certain things? Like, that tells me you wasn't making enough of music. So, like, I'm not for the song. Okay. Okay. Nah, that's, that's, that's big facts. And there's so much I can add to that, even like how, like, what you were saying about how independent artists can outshine a, a major artist. Like, the only thing really major labels have that the independents don't have is like easy access to like resources. Mm -hmm. You mean like radio, brand partnerships, you know what I'm saying, marketing and shit like that. Like, we even through the marketing, like, they want to get a bill for it, they can just call somebody. Like, it's not like the niggas, like, how we got to go through the whole process of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, with that being said, so like, have you started building your independent label? Yeah. And what's the name of your label? 
uh, finesse for a blessing in the time. Uh, okay, you got this your kid? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what's up. That's what's up. And so if a label came at you with a million dollars, what you doing? Now, now what I have considered is like signing my label yeah. type shit to like a distribution type deal. But, so I'm saying they came with you. I'm saying though they came with you. Let me not, let me draw it up. Like they came with you a million. And they said we just want to. We'll give you a distribution. That we just want a percentage of your, of your sales. For sure, we can make it make sense. Like that. you know, that's smooth. Yeah. That's smooth. But like just. So what are you? Do you have your absolute nose? Like, like on some like if they talking about this and this. No. Yeah, like three sixties ain't my way. Right. Uh, just signing over certain rights, just, it just don't interest me for real. Right. Like, I still got a long way to go for sure. Like, I ain't just the most known artist out there, yeah. but I believe in myself and I believe in like my brand, like outside of the music. Like, I know like I'm gonna touch certain numbers by myself. I'm gonna do certain things by myself. So it's like, the money don't impress me, the money will come. I always say that. Yeah. I don't care where you at. Down by the money will come. Okay. So like I'm not moved by money. Okay. So, what's um you got a project out, right? Yeah. What's, what's the name of it? Uh, my last project was Destiny for Greatness. But I'm actually gonna drop another one. When did uh Destiny for Greatness drop? What was it? It was my birthday of twenty twenty two. Okay, so then you ain't drop you ain't dropped in a minute. I know today, I draw like singles, but. Okay. And, and for the people who like, they went to that tape, what song would you tell them to go listen to off that? I'd tell them to listen to Real, i tell them to listen to Attachment Problems, and I'd definitely tell them to listen to, I want to say Lay Up Line, but I'll put uh, Fearless over Lay Up Line, for sure. And has your sound now, or not even your sound, but just has your music evolved from that you about to put out now from that tape? What would you say is probably like one of the biggest differences? My actual like, like sound in general, like uh, I vocally sound, mm-hmm. I feel like it's way better. Um, beat selection, like production, um, that's way better. Content, like I'm real big on like, um, like my penmanship. So I feel like I sound better as an artist, I sound more mature. Mm-hmm. Um, and the vibe is different on this table. It's like a more turn, like uh, get money type thing. Last take, that was more personal. Type shit. Sure. Had that on there, but it wasn't like as lit. Yeah. So this 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 the one. Like, <clears throat> this the one to turn you up. Yeah. Like I drive around this like every day. Like I guess if I wasn't me, I'd listen to it. Type shit. Sure. You feel? Me? And when this when this was we talking? I was going to do August, but I'm thinking about September. Okay, you got a name for it? Yeah, it's called um, Life of a Hustler. And then talk about that um, video we, we just shot, too, at the vault. What's the name of that song? Deposits. That's Deposits. It's going to be on the tape for sure. Yeah, talk about that video and just how you, you know, basically like a creative director, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you like come up with the ideas? Do you always come up with ideas, videos, and stuff like that? Like, yeah, I always come up with my ideas. Um, even if I don't come up with a full thing, try to collab with the camera and I give you talk. And uh, I had to got the research because I had did a lot of performance at the bank already, like at an actual uh, what was it, the Truist. So I, was, I gotta go bigger than that. So I'm like, I don't know a bank that'll let me go inside and shoot with the tellers. So I started looking, found a uh, found a crazy vault. Like brainstorming, listening to the song, and like put the whole plot together. And uh, when it drops, like I definitely feel like folks gonna like they gonna be caught off guard. But yeah, definitely feel crazy for sure. And what would you say is probably the realest shit you ever wrote? The realest shit I ever wrote. Mm-hmm. I'm mean, out say my song real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, is that the one you did on the, on the mic thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I forgot that one. Okay. 
Hell uh, yeah, so outside of that, um, the uh, life of a hustler, what else, what, what else you got coming? It's really it for the rest of the year because I'm planning on dropping that and then the deluxe. You know what I mean? Everything else is going to be like features. Right. So, like, a feature that people want to put me on their song or uh, features, and I'll just say, like, just making sure I put out, like, quality visuals for the whole tape. Right. Who's some of artists you work with? Uh, Jay Killer, my partner Lowski, and then I'm trying to get a female on the tape, so that's, like, still in the works. Yeah. That's what's up, man. For sure. Appreciate having you. Let the people know where they can follow you, find you, stream your music. For sure, for sure, man. My name is Lil Brand. Y'all can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and any other uh, social media platform at Lil Brand underscore one. And then y'all can find my music, any streaming platform at Lil Brand. It's L I L B R A N. You did. For sure, man. Vision Talk. Y'all this motherfucker.